And then over here, obviously I had my obviously I had my stove from last time. Same thing. Same cook set here. Uh, but in this pack, this is that stuff I interchange right there between the packs. I leave this one. It's just a little multi-tool. I leave this one in the pack all the time because you never know when you're gonna need it. And I have two of these. This is the SOG seal pup that I had. Um, this is the older of the two, so I just stick this one in the in the day pack in case I need it for anything. It, it's again, it's good for splitting wood and that kind of stuff. Um, when I get up to one of the colonial sites before deep pond, I'll I'll show you how I use that. But um, waterproof matches. I actually dip the tips of them in wax. You probably can't really tell from the video, but that helps keep them somewhat waterproof. Just a uh, little cleaning pad for for cleaning off the the pots and pans and stuff. Bug juice. That's always just good to have because here in New England it gets horrendous with the black flies and mosquitoes and everything else the other times of the year. This is the here we go, the Optimus uh, utensil set that I, I forgot on my winter backpacking trip and I had to make that one out of wood last time. But the, these are the, the titanium Optimus ones right there. The, these are awesome. They work. They're not that heavy and they're, they're great. I keep a uh, dry pack in here, a little dry sack in, in here also just for even the phone I'm using to, to take the video if it, it depends if it's if I don't have anything else to store in there, just stuff I want to keep dry. And uh mountain house meal, one I just I just leave in there all the time anyway in case I get out here longer than I expected and I'm hungry. And my now Jean water bottle. Hurricane Irene did a number on this area. There's a lot of felled trees down here, pretty big ones. They're down in that wet swampier area so the roots probably didn't have much to hold on to. And then that one up ahead there, the, the top of it broke off. And then this one on the side. That one was there for a while but the one up there, those two down there, the one off in the distance there, that wasn't like that last time I was up here in the uh, spring of last year. Here's an interesting find. It's something I was looking for last time when I was winter backpacking to that shelter. Um, let me show you. It's that light green stuff. It's called reindeer moss. This is some right here. Unfortunately, this stuff is all dried up. The underside still, still damp on it. A whole lot. I don't know if you can actually reconstitute this stuff or not. Like, sit it in water for a while if it'll soak it up or not. If you put it in tea, it's high in starches, um, but it's bitter. You have to you have to run it through a boil or two to take that that edge off of it. But uh, it was only at the beginning of my hike last time when I went to the shelter. I couldn't find it anywhere else, and I never videotaped it so. I just wanted to show that this area that I'm in, there's the trail right there. Back up here, it looks like a farm dump, like a place where a farmer had left all his stuff that he didn't have any use for anymore. There's old tires and stuff down there. It's a sheer drop right down to the bottom of this thing, right over there. Obviously, it hasn't been used for a long time, but so I think I'm going to take this home and see what I can do with it. Okay, there we go. Back over my shoulder there. That's the area it came from. Um, it, it looks like this was a a dirt road at one time, maybe for because it takes you to that that dump site too, but as you're going down it, this is the area I was talking about when you came to it, you had to take a right. There used to not be a, a sign here, but there is now, and now it's hard to miss. It's right there, deep pond. It, this, this trail goes a little ways back in over here, and uh, part way out there, 
there's a, a site that's man-made. I'm not sure if it was made by Native Americans or if it was made by the colonial settlers that, that came here back then. But I'll, I'll show you it. Okay, here's one of those markers that the Army Corps of Engineers puts out to mark specific sites. I'm assuming that it was put here for the the historical site that's up the path here that I was talking about. If uh, any of you guys know for sure what it is, uh, feel free to post. I'd love to know. All right, I'm at the colonial site. Here's here it is, part of it. You can see all the the rocks lined up the way they are, and then over here. There's a ton of these rock piles. One there, there, off behind down there. I mean, if I were to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. I mean, there's a good dozen of them. One right here, this tree fell on. Those two back there. This one up ahead here. That one could have been a fireplace, I don't know. There's that right there. A couple tucked in down the hill there. Now, I mean, I'm just speculating here, but I have been told that, um, by people in the know, that places like this, back in uh, colonial times, people would bury, when someone died, they would bury them, but not just bury them, they'd bury them and then put a pile of rocks down so that animals like coyotes wouldn't dig them up and start eating them. Uh, I don't think that's the case here though, because if you see this pile right here, there's a few other ones like this, there's the gigantic rocks right underneath all these small rocks. So, I mean, if, if that were the case, the, the gigantic rocks would not be there because Obviously, someone would have had to pick them up and put them there, and I don't think they'd go through the trouble. I think they'd be using Riverstone-sized rocks, the, the smaller ones, like, I mean, these ones over here, all those, that, that would make more sense. So I have no idea what this site is. It's obviously man-made. Um, again, I don't know, Native American, early uh, colonists, early settlers, but if anyone out there knows for sure what they are, I would be psyched to know, because I've found these different sites throughout the New England woods in, in all different spots, and I've always wondered what their purpose is, what they would use them for. There's actually a pretty big one right up here. If you can see it off up there. Yeah, that one behind me off in the distance. I Again, they're, they're just big piles of rocks. I have no idea what they could be used for. The, the ones up by when this first started, just back there a little bit, that almost looked like it could have been a foundation. It was sort of squared off but small. But, I mean, again, here they are. There's that one. This. Up there. The one way up there. So, I have no idea. Hopefully someone will please enlighten me about that. Okay, I made it. Here's the, the deep pond. I'm assuming it got its name because it's a deep pond, but it's way off here. Um, it's funny, there, there's an abandoned house on the other side. I don't know if you can see if I can get it right there. I think that's it. It's hard to tell. I think, I think that is it right there. Right in front. Last winter when this was completely frozen over, obviously it's not even slightly frozen now. Uh, I was able to just walk right across the thing. That was cool. I wish I had some skates. I would have brought them out here, but it was thick. Last winter was a cold winter, but I was able to just circumvent the whole thing walk around the edge. I got kind of far out, but 
I didn't want to get too far and then find out that the ice was thin out there, so I didn't push my luck, but it was fun. You could see uh, where the snow had landed on the ice, too, uh, what kinds of animals had crossed the pond. But uh, I really, the, the sun's actually setting behind me over here, this way, and I just hope I have enough time to get back out to the car. I mean, I'll find my way out either way, but it's kind of rough. You have to be a little more careful when you, you're doing it, and it, it's pretty dark out, just so you don't take a wrong turn or something. But that's it. I'm going to work my way back out of here now. I found some dead mountain laurel right there, part that had broken over and and died off. Uh, I have it right here. This is a, a piece of the, the log I took off of it. Now, with those two things right there, that's all you need to get some good firewood. You, you'd be surprised how thick of a piece of wood you can split with a knife like that. If you just... Uh, Get it to stand up over here. Hopefully I can get this to stand up. I don't know. See? <laughs> this is why... This is why it helps to have a second person when doing this stuff. Uh, Alright. Yeah, I think I got it. Take your knife. This right here is just a dead piece of oak I found along the way. Just center the knife on there. And then, look at that. I mean, phew, I actually made that look a lot easier than, than it. sometimes it takes a little more effort to, to get through, but I mean, makes perfect little kindling pieces for getting a fire started. And all it takes is this. You don't need an axe or anything. Um, you can... Uh, if you're going to get some big logs, stuff like like that, you could probably still cut it with this. But anything much bigger than that, you don't want anything that's about that much that big as far as the blade's concerned here. And uh, even that's kind of pushing it. You can do it, but you have to work a little bit. But there it is. I mean, just... <laughs> and, and this stuff, this stuff, like I said, is really good fire starter. You put it in there and... If it, if it was off the ground, it, it's going to light, even after a good rain or snow or something. Here's actually a second one of those colonial sites or whatever that you can see out here. It's closer to the deep pond, and it, it seems like it's a little bit older because the rocks are actually settled in the dirt a little more. See, there's one right here, almost in the middle of the path. Up there by that tree, there's one right there. But this one isn't as distinct as the other one. But again, it looks like it might be a lot older. Everything's settled in a lot more. I'm racing the clock over here. The sun has already set over the horizon back there. There it is, what's left of it. I mean, I can still see fine, and I probably will be for a while, but I'm back at the pond, um, and I'm a little ways in, so the trail's right here. It's clearly marked. I'll have no trouble, but I mean, if I had stayed out there even maybe half hour longer, I'd be in a different situation right now, and I don't have a compass or any of that stuff on me. Okay, I'm back at the car. Got the dog packed up and I'm gonna get on out of here. That's there's the horizon right there. The woods are getting pretty dark. Whew. Man, just get the pack in the car and I'm on my way out. <laughs>